Hello traders, it's uh, Graham here from Kilted Trading. I'm um, going to do a very quick one this week with uh, more than the, the theme of tips and tricks. And um, we're going to look at one particular setup that I took during the week on the USD against the Japanese yen. Uh, but first up, we'll have a look. I'm getting a few sort of questions around the sort of currency strength um, meter that we he have here at uh, Kilted Trading. Um, it is a really good tool, um, but I'm going to show you guys um, how to set up an equivalent. This is something I use in my own trading. I've sort of developed this uh, myself. It's uh, very much for my own personal use. Um, but there's no reason why you guys can't um, use the same tools. Um, are very similar. And I'm actually going to show you how you can set it up the equivalent. And I actually think better than what we actually have here using the Kilted Strength uh, meter, which uh, for those who have got that, you probably don't uh, realize um, some of the, the you know, the, uh, I guess the advantages of actually uh, having that, and especially within Trading View, how you can set that up to show you the equivalent of what we've got down here in the grid. So we will jump straight to it. So um, this is one of the trades I took last week um, on the USD JPY. We're seeing the, the US dollar weaken. Um, uh, and particularly against the, the yen, um, where we had um, some uh, risk sort of uh, aversion there. Uh, so the, the, the yen was definitely uh, strong uh, with uh, some of the moves in the, the stock market. So I had a look at um, what was playing out here on our um, currency um, sort of strength mirror and decided to, to trade the, the US dollar against the Japanese yen. So th this is one uh, method that I use to sort of evaluate you know, one currency pair across multiple time frames, again, for confirmation. Um, there are some alternatives. You can Google it, guys. You know, there's heaps of alternatives out there. This is one I've actually used before. Um, it's livecharts.co.uk, currency strength. Now, I'm not quite sure when I click on that link. Um, it's actually not, doesn't actually resolve anything. Um, I'm not sure where that's just because it's only online during sort of market hours, not quite sure, but that's one I've certainly used in the future. It's sort of in the past, uh, and that's uh, certainly one you can look at, but there's heaps of them around. Um, a lot of them you'll pay a fee for. Um, I don't think you need to pay anything, and I'll show you why. So if we look at the GBP USD as an example, and also the USD JPY, uh, and uh, using our kilted strength meter, I'll, I'll show you exactly what I mean by saying that you guys already have this tool and you're maybe not quite aware of it. So if we look at the Kilted Strength Mirror, um, what you've got is, remember, on the background here, um, and now what I've done is I've actually set up a currency pair against the three uh, time frames. That, so for the multi time frame confirmation, which is exactly what we have here, okay? What, what, for every pair here, there's basically three time frame so we've got the daily we've got the four hour and we've got the hourly and that's effectively what i've set up here it doesn't really matter what pair and um, we look at i've just um uh, done a bit of a, a cheat sheet ahead of time guys in the interest of time so you can see here remember we have a blue background here don't worry about these squares we'll come to that at the end and um, but the blue background here is basically saying we're pointing up so we've got up on the daily we've got down on the four hour, as you can see, there's a general sort of trend, and then also down on the one hour against the, the British pound, the cable against the US dollar. So we have an up, down, down, and if we go back here, GBP USD, we have an up, down, down, so it matches. So guys, you actually have this already at your fingertips using the Kilted Strength Mirror. Okay, if we have a look at another, uh, another um, example to look at, we've got the US dollar against the Japanese yen, which is showing down on the daily, down on the four hour, you can see with this background. And um, I'm actually showing up here on the, um, or on the one hour, um, and, and I would argue um, my indicator here is actually more accurate than what we're showing over on this one here. So 
we've got uh, down, down and up. What have we got here? JBP, USD, we've got, um, sorry, USD, JPY, we've got down, down, down. So it doesn't quite match. Um, I've actually got this pointing up um, and we can see why here um, because um, the settings we've got here are a little bit more sensitive to sort of current price action uh, and remember each candle here is an hour so you can see there there is actually a general trend to the upside so I've actually drawn the, the, the line here and we're actually we could draw another line here also showing that it's actually in a channel now you can see though if we actually trace back and that's why this other one over here is showing probably down here the general trend is actually down okay so if we go scroll back you can see this long period of where we've actually gone down okay um but i'm looking i want to see current price action okay um over a sort of um, longer trend so this this is um showing me that we're actually currently in an uptrend um but then looking to perhaps go short up up here okay which would align with this might be a trading plan for next week guys but um that's an illustration of um how you can use it in your trading the kill to strength mirror you've basically got that already guys and um, it's not quite as probably nice as what we have here okay it's a, at a glance but that's something i'm actually having a look at now to actually make this indicator better at a glance so this is what um a concept uh, I, I guess i've got the idea from what i currently use here um, and I want to replace some of what I've got here so that I can jump over to a chart and basically flick through any currency. So, so I've got the, you know, the uh, a number of majors here set up that I look at. Um, just bring this over a little bit so we can see what those are. So I've got the Aussie USD, Euro USD. So you can basically click on any of these and I'll basically show you the same picture. Um, but back to the little. Um, rectangles here my thinking is that we have something a, a really easy indicator just um, that stands out a little bit so you can just cast your eye across the three time frames and see where we are so we're up we're down we're down okay and um, to represent something that we've got over here okay which will give you effectively the same thing so that's something i'm going to be working at uh, on over the, the next um or oh, probably a couple of days it shouldn't take me that long um, I'll have a, a look at how I can implement that. Um, it might be slightly different to what we've got here, but that's the thinking on how I can uh, give you that, guys. Um, as a, I guess for those who have already got the kill to strength mirror, you'll get that automatically. Anyone thinking about, you know, um, getting a hold of the kill to strength meter, purchasing that indicator, then um, you, you'll also get that as well uh, when I. Uh, develop the the code for that one and get it updated but that's something that we're uh, currently looking here at kilted trading to implement and um, so just on that i just thought i'd take you through one of the setups that actually did take on the usd jpy um so you can see there i can just if i want to do just flick across and then it'll update all the three how nice is that and um, that's the beauty of trading view and um, so we've got down down and we've got a flick up here to the upside. Um, but what we'll do is uh, I'll show you one of the trades I took um, where basically we had showing on the currency meter here, it was no different. So my view was, it was all red. So what I said was, oh, that looks like a good trade to pair. Now what I did do was I actually had a look at it um, so we're going to break down this hopefully very quickly guys so um, I took the trade ahead of the news I don't generally trade the news um, but I tried to get in for a quick scalp um, and we'll, we'll, um, we'll cover some of the, the techniques um, which I think is a, is a really good um, one to actually step through here because I had a few questions on another forum as to how I trend um, or sorry how I trade head and shoulder patterns how I trade breakouts. Look, there's a, a lot of options there in terms of what you can do. Um, some of those, you know, you treat with a bit of discretion uh, and I'll show you why here. On this one, uh, very quickly, what we're seeing was we had everything going down and I noticed on the one hour um, time frame, actually it was on the 10 minute time frame, beg your pardon, I had a bit of a head and shoulders pattern set up 
So I've drawn that out here quickly. And what I was looking to do is um, enter on the break of the neckline. So we can see it's, it's going up here. Um, it wasn't the cleanest, I have to admit, but I did like it. You could, I actually mentioned uh, one of the other forums, I was actually trading this as a bear flag, which is um, probably more uh, closer to how I was uh, actually trading because we had a long push down here and we had this push up, which I treated as a, as a bear flag. Um, look, different people see different things in the market. I, I was primarily trading it as a, as a breakout or a, a, you know, a continuation pattern with a, a, a bear flag, um, but there was a head and shoulders pattern in play as well. Um, so on this one, contrary to uh, one I took early in the day where I just basically took a edge, once it broke that neckline, I was in. Um, and, you know, a place to stop above the candle um, that broke, which in this case would be this one. Um, However, I was treating this with a little bit of caution because we're, we're coming into some news. Um, it was probably a, a couple of hours ahead of when I was looking to take this trade. And I decided to trade this a little bit um, more of the, let's say, the traditionalist approach where I, I want to see a rounded retest back up to the sort of neckline before getting in short because everything um, was, was pointing short. So I wanted... Um, I, I guess a, a good entry here. I didn't think it was going to go real quick because we, we were ahead of the news. So what I did was I decided to basically, um, we'll just get rid of this here. I was using this stochastic here and um, with uh, trying to, to tie my uh, entry point. So what I did was I saw the rounded retest, I saw this um, pin bar here and a second pin bar. I, I basically wanted to trade off at a pin bar, uh, which I love trading, um, and using this to, uh, the stochastic to basically time that entry. So, we're, you know, this is an oscillator, so it's showing you where in the cycle you are. So you can see here, you know, I was seeing, I saw this break, but it was down here. Didn't like that, so I went, okay, I'm going to wait to retest, retest. So it went up really nice, and I saw the couple of pins, and I took an entry here. Now what it did then was it then it then it broke. It broke really nicely. Uh, ahead of the news, but I was very conscious of what may come out of the news. Now, I was expecting, and I must admit, my bias was there was going to be some negative um, sentiment, but as always on the, 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 the S&P 500, you know, expect the unexpected, and uh, I have a theory that on a Friday with S&P 500, it uh, always ticks up, um, which is what I had um uh, that that was on the, the back of my mind, so I'll show you how that played out. Um, so basically, I got in short here. Now, once I hit my first target, I took 80% off the table, so I was in profit. I left the stop, um, which was basically because I was getting in late, so the better entry, I was able to have a fairly tight stop, so that was just above this swing high, which I basically um, was, this swing high was actually a daily high, which was marked up here. So I, I, I actually quite like this trade um, at, at, the, at the outset. However, I was very conscious of the news. So I've just um, I've, I've just um, had, a, a, I guess, a call out here in terms of how I managed the trade. So my, my second take profit target was actually this zone down here. Okay, we had some support, some support down here, um, which we'll see if we zoom across. Yeah, we... Um, this was a sort of area of support that was marking up uh, and basically the, the height of the, you know, it was a sort of measured move for the, the height of the um, the head here. So it's measured down, you know, sort of down here somewhere with this support level. And um, so this was sort of my zone that I was looking to get down to. So again, that was with just 20% remaining. However, what we always do is when we're in a trade, uh, especially in a 10 minute time frame, you're, you're effectively scalping, right? Um, is watching um, what's happening in the market and, and taking, uh, I guess, uh, a, 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 an active sort of approach to where you're um, going to get out. Uh, and sometimes you want to get out early. And that's, in this case, this is what I did. So when the news hit it, and that was at 1 a.m., which we'll just trace back here. Um, let's get that up. We trace back to 1 a.m. is here. 
Um, so the positive sentiment came out, couldn't quite believe it, and I went, okay, I'm done. The S&P 500, it's off on its run again against all logic. So I basically closed my trade. I took a small loss, didn't care because I wanted to be out because I knew the S&P 500 was going to run. Um, I knew it was going to take off as what it does normally on a Friday uh, and especially after the wobbly during the week. And um, I got out here, took a loss. I was really happy to take my loss. Uh, I published that in one of the forums as well that was on at the time and um, went to bed. And of course, what did it do? It rides up. Would it have taken a stop out? Yes, it would. So for me, that was a really good trade. It followed all my trading rules that I had in place to, to trade this pair. And that was, uh, you know, trading the plan, trading the rules, um, which was... Um, which was really good. So um, so you see there, I was using a pin bar. I always trade off, try and trade off something that gets me into the market. Just to recap, I was using the, st the stochastic as well as a measure of when to look to get in. And that was off here. And um, we'll just blow this up a little bit, guys, so you can see a bit better. Um, which is here. You can see the two, um, we'll just get this guy out the way get some of the clutter out of the way. Um, so here, so we took the, I was looking at these, when I saw these sort of pin bars appearing, I was seeing it wasn't, um, it, it, it was looking like it was sort of running out of puff, which sort of, um, you know, matched the confluence here on this statistic to get in. And I took a shot on that pin bar, a few ticks below uh, to, to, to run it down and then got out um, pretty much down here when I saw it sort of turn around um, and then you know I was just waiting for the, the, the news so I took the 80% off and got the nice take profit target was looking for the rest to run but just never got there guys and the, the news came up and I said let's get out because the S&P 500 generally follows the, the USD JPY if the S&P 500 goes up so does the US dollar Japanese yen and that's how I traded that one guys. So I'm going to have a, another um, a quick pad podcast on some of the open trades uh, and what I'm looking at uh, to break things up nicely. And um, so hope you enjoyed that one guys. Um, uh, I will have a look at, as I say, um, having a look at um, getting some boxes in here. It's a, a, a really nice indicator of where we're at across the, the three different time frames. Remember, you can set up this sort of similar approach. You just click on the little uh, icon here and you can have your setup. You can have, you know, up to, I think, eight um, pairs or eight time frames. Um, you can certainly have that. It gets a little bit messy on the chart, but guys, you can play around with it. That's how you set it up. The Kilt of Strength Mirror does all of that for you out the box. Um, so happy trading, uh, guys, for the, the week ahead. I uh, hope you've all been trading uh, really well and banking some profits. And as I always say, look after your families and stay safe out there. Thank you. Speak to you soon.